Um, well, let's go ahead and open this uh, meeting of the Unionville Historic District Commission on this um, Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. And we will begin first by uh, reviewing and approving the minutes of January 5th, 2023. Have, do, have you all had an opportunity to read the minutes? Garrett's got them up on the screen. You yes. have? Yeah, yeah. Anne, have you had a chance to read them? I didn't see it come across the, my table viewpoint, so no. Yeah. Okay. Well, why don't we I'm take a couple? Okay, Anne, why don't you go ahead and read them? We'll take a we'll take a couple minutes. Just let us know when you're finished. Okay. Hi, Anne. Hey. Good afternoon. How's everyone doing? Great. How are you? Doing well, thanks. We're just uh, uh, going over the minutes right now before we uh, uh, vote on them. It looks okay. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. Thank you, a second? I second. Thank you. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Hearing none, um, all in favor of approving the January 5th, 2023 minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No? Okay, very good. The minutes are approved. Now we will move on to, thank you, Garrett. <laughs> um, so an informal discussion about, um, from the property owner at 42 Cottage Street, who wishes to put up a fence and um, is not prepared yet to come to ask for COA, but Garrett's going to present the information to us now. Yeah, so just Let's talk about it. Just quick. So um, the new property owners of 42 Cottage Street, I think they bought a few months ago, um, are looking to fence in their yard. Um, their contractor reached out to me because they knew their historic property. Um, and I, I told them it was too late in the month to have a COA application, but that I'd be more than happy to uh, present the information to the commission. So that way, um, you know, it's a, it, they're more prepared at the meeting in that way, because they were eyeing a couple options for fencing um, and the fencing contractor kind of pushed them, gave them two options because they were thinking they'd just do black vinyl, but because it's stark property that the commission might not be okay with that. So I, I said, well, send everything to me, you know, where the fencing will be and we'll work out from there. So. That being said, um, I got this map from the fencing contractor. So there's an existing uh, cedar stockade fence along the northern property line uh, between uh, the property owners and Bob's house. Um, so that's existing. They're proposing to match that fencing between the house and the garage and then along the southern property line to almost the end of the river. Um, and then they're looking to do either a post and wire or black chain link fence along the rear, along the river. Um, so I'll have, to, I'll have to zoom out of zoom in and out because the picture's larger. Um, so here's the existing fence along the property line. Mm -hmm. um, and then <clears throat> this is the post and wire fence that, that the contractor gave as an option. Uh, and then also just a standard uh, black chain link as well as another option. Um, let me, I feel like there was one other thing. Um, uh, yeah, and the, the, the fencing shown in purple would be four feet high. Um, and I believe the green, the fencing shown in green is six feet high. And just for the commission, so I went out to West Avon Road yesterday, and I stood right at the edge of the, uh, the roadway, I guess. I'm trying to think of the name of the fence, but stood at the edge of the roadway and just took a picture of the backyard from West Avon Road because it's not, well, I guess it is technically on a, another street, but there's a river, the river in between, which kind of separates it, and there's vegetation back there. So, mm -hmm. but, you know, I, it's set further back. It, whether the commission would find the, the chain link acceptable or that you prefer the post and wire fence because um, it is historic while still offering um, 
the state they're trying to fence in their yard so their dog can run around um so they have to worry about it so okay okay um yeah so I just have a, a question to make sure I understand. So the there um, in the back next to the stream, they would like to do either the chain link or the wood and wire fence. Correct. Correct. Yes. But in the other part of the property, they would do the um, the wooden uh, vertical fencing that you showed us. Is that correct? Yes, and that and that is already existing on the property. So it'd just be um continuing that at least on you know that that would be visible maybe from cottage street yeah um, okay. i i can't do street view because i don't think google's gone up to cottage street but um yeah. Yeah. so that, like i said the the fence along the northern property line here is existing and then between the house and the garage would match the existing fence um mm -hmm. they'd continue it along the southern property line which i think they're if you look at the uh photo hold on one second there is an existing fence already there i think that might be the neighbor's property um that oh, is okay the, and you say there's an existing fence along that um yes that I side yard know. already okay that's not a better picture okay yeah i can i can see there's a fence there yes there's something there yeah Let's try this. Um, I, I don't know if from West Avon Road, I've never seen anyone else, anyone stand there to look over to see whether or not it's visible. So I don't, I mean, you, it's, it's not exactly a road you want to stand on. I can attest to that as of yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I mean, I don't think it really matters that much what they, you know, what they put back there. I understand they want to protect their dog, but I don't think you'll get complaints from people standing on that road. What do you, Matt, you're shaking your head no. Do you no, agree? I would say I would agree with the same. In, in the summertime, the, the foliage sh uh, shrouds the backyards. Right. And if anything... A chain link, the the black chain link offers them better views of of the the brook and everything. Mm -hmm. that I would, to me, it seems like a more optimal solution for that back area abutting the the stream. Okay, okay, yeah. and and I don't think you know, like we're usually not that concerned with the backyard. Uh, in this okay. case, there may be some visibility, but I. People Only in the winter time. Look and complain. So I, I just want to make sure uh, of this. If you're standing on the street in front of the house, you would not see the ch a chain link fence in the back along the stream. Uh, I don't think I can get a view from. Yeah, um, I don't because the side yards are it's it's pretty narrow on on either side. This might be a little better. Hmm. Uh, Street. Hmm. So you've got um, this is the house, and then the the garage is right here, and they're mm -hmm. they would be also putting a stockade fence here, and I'm assuming there'd probably be a connection to the garage to 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 fence yeah. that all in. Um, so it, it and it'd be. And they're looking, so as you can see the existing stockade fence here, that's yeah. probably for 38, which I think, I think Sanford and Holly owns. Um, so the, the chain link, they're just proposing along this property line and then I think up to the garage. So okay. all of this would be, which, I'm sorry, I keep jumping around. No, no, let's make. Let's so make here's, it. here's Cottage Street. You've got the house, yeah. the existing fence, uh, existing fence here connecting here and then it would basically be from the back corner of the garage to the mm -hmm. end of the existing fence on the southern property line which okay. would be uh to here so for so about here 
Yeah. It, yeah. it is the section that you can see from West Avon. Again, if you're staying, if you stop and stand on West Avon Road um, right. in the winter. In the winter. Right. In the winter. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Garrett, thank you for that daredevil. Okay. Little, that, <laughs> appreciate that. Um, okay. That's great. All right. Does anybody uh, else have questions about the? Um... Garrett, any any reason they would go? Like, are they? Is there a reason they're leaning towards the six foot stockade on the side yards versus the the post and wire? Because uh, they're it's existing um, on those sides. So they the. Uh, so this is a section of existing fence. Um, that's a budding Bob's property, right? I believe so. I could. It looks yeah, like it from the yeah the, yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. But that also so that, looks that's along too. here, and then there's the existing wood stockade on the south fence as well. Yeah. So that so that would be just kind of uh, so the the. Hmm. Real new, the only fully standalone new section of stockade would be from uh, uh, the garage. Right. Sorry, I'm getting on my. Yeah. Would be connecting from the, the house to the garage. Right. There, there'd be, there's, again, this fence is existing. They'd connect it to the house. Uh, they might, I mean, they might put up their own fence, I think, because the one on the Sanford Holly piece, I don't think is in that great condition. Um, yeah. But that, you know, it would match what the fencing that's already there again match the existing fencing extend it and then this would just match that um, yeah. that way it gives them some privacy i kind of you know there's not that many houses on cottage street so but yeah. but still i mean the, the house is pretty low to begin with um and then the garage is set far back so i'm assuming that's the reason i i, I had only been talking with uh, the fencing contractor i didn't speak to the homeowners yeah. um but just you know, get an idea of what what the commission thought, um, and the only reason I didn't say no, they're not going to approve black chain wing fence is because we had talked about it with the piece of the house recently on Franklin Avenue, where it was set back. It was in the shade, so the black vinyl really kind of yeah. kind of disappear. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. As that as that you know, you can't really see it for the most part, and it, if it was um, like regular galvanized with green yeah. slats in it that might stand out more than if you just had the black that kind of disappears in the shadows in the winter and yeah. in the summer you can't see it with all the with the leaves right right all right well i'm 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 persuaded by the <laughs> lack of visibility of that back fence then by uh by um by your comments so i appreciate that i'm i um I can understand their desire to close in their yard for a dog. Absolutely, no question. I think the the six foot height is <laughs> kind of looks like a stockade, you know, like they're. <laughs> um, but but I once again, I if it's already on the property, I understand that as well. Um, so I guess I don't have any strong feelings either, yay or nay. To be quite honest, I I um. Anybody else have strong feelings, yay or nay? Well, Bob is going to see it closer no. than any of us, but I know. I'm sorry, Bob's not here, but that's okay. I, I uh, that's all right. Um, I, I can reach out to him tomorrow and and just speak to him about it, just so he's aware. Um, yeah, yeah. I, so I'm I'm assuming that yes, the COA is required. But that it's yeah. not 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 a uh, a no on the black chain link if if as long as we talk about it and the reasoning and everything like that. Yeah, I think can we say that's a consensus? Is we all agree like, on that that the black uh, chain link is a fine alternative? Yeah. This applicant. Okay. All right. Yes. It, I mean, if right. anything, it preserves the view of the backyard and it does. Know, for the homeowner. And yeah. again, it's shrouded in the in the summertime. Yeah, it'll, it'll blend right in in the in the winter time. Okay, okay. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I'll relay that and I'll tell them to make a formal application for uh, for the uh, March meeting. Terrific. Thank you, Garrett. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.
Yeah, no, that's that's a great way to go, the informal. Well, that's excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, so then we will move on to um, number four, which is our walking tour brochure. And I know, uh, I know, Matt has a he says a surprise for us. So take it away, Matt. <laughs> so, so updates yeah. and, and and bear with me while I try to do this. Okay. With the technology, but so we had all seen the initial draft that I shared with everybody in terms yeah. of the trifold. And there was some feedback and can, can we try to fit more in, fit more properties in? And I played around with it and played around with it and I couldn't get it fit in even in, in like a, a bifold format or going to a 11 by 14 um, size, uh, like legal size paper and, and maybe going with a quad fold. So I started trying to brainstorm, okay, what else can we do? And what I came up with was, do I have it here? Yes. Um, so you should all see on, on the screen now, pocket sites. So you guys see that, right? Yes. Okay. So pocket sites is building a walking tour digitally for an app. And so I started playing around with their free version. And what I'm going to share with you now, hopefully, let's see if this works, is what it looks like on a phone. Wow. It's <laughs> great. doesn't want to come on. I think you have to stop sharing your computer, Matt. Maybe that's it. There we there go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this shows up because of my location. But this is, so what you see here is the first photo that I've loaded for um, stop number one, mm -hmm. which is the Episcopal Church on the corner. Mm -hmm. And you would start the tour. And I'm going to do standard tour only because I'm not there. Yeah. And as you click through, you get a picture. We could load multiple pictures hmm. and text, and we go. You go to the next one. Oh, look at that! Huh. Wow. Hmm. Oh, yeah. oh, that's great! Got the. So I took the pictures that we have. We yeah. can continue to modify these and add other photos. Yep, yep. Um, but this puts it in more of a digital format. And right now I have this built as a it's a one-way tour. Mm -hmm, I'd mm -hmm. redesign and have it be a, like a loop go up one side, down the other side. I mean, mm -hmm. sidewalks have to be taken into account. But really what it came down to was trying to find a way to um fit more properties in to the mm -hmm. tour. With, without kind of messing with the format and it just I, I tried shrinking shrinking font shrinking pictures and yeah. it just got to a point where it was it wasn't a readable walking tour pamphlet that was yeah so, yeah well no. bravo dragging us into the 21st century <laughs> thank you Matt well uh, and there's some great. caveats so yeah this is the free version okay and and there are paid versions of this, which come with unlimited walking tours. Like, I think this is one of those, we have to explore a larger conversation. Like we could move all of our walking tours onto mm -hmm. this format. 
-hmm. The other question is, and, and before I even approach those other individuals, I wanted to at least bring it up with you guys first. Like we could do this with one subscription town wide and have this serve Farmington, Unionville. This is something Rose could use for economic development. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. there's there's bigger implications here yeah yeah so So, i'm sorry go ahead barbara go ahead so if we were when we go let's say we have the tour everyone on that tour can log in to the to the pocket tours yeah the app is the app is free you download the app and you search for tours in your area based on the radius of where you are Okay. You could add audio. Or we could do it as a group. uh, Yeah, you you could do this with, we could be leading a a walking tour and have everybody with their own phone and and earbuds listening to audio as we're walking along and we're just leading them. So I didn't embed any audio in this, but it it is capable of building in audio as well. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. It is. That's very interesting. Yeah. There's a lot that could be done with that. Right. Um, like ambient sounds or, Correct. I mean, the sound of the carpenter building a, you know, the sounds of somebody building a house, for example. I'm just thinking about mm-hmm. wonderful ambient sounds. So, Matt, have you talked to Rose about this? I um, have not. I didn't, okay. approach, I didn't approach anybody other than oh, I wanted to at least give you guys an idea of where we were where i was with trying okay. to build out the additional properties into the the walking tour yeah we i still have the the base template of what i created a few months ago for lovely street it was just the fact that i i was struggling with trying to work additional properties in and yep. have it be a readable format and yep. so i started to explore other options I did reach out to the developer of this particular app. And I mean, this isn't the only walking tour app out there. There are others that are available. Um, this was just one of the the ones that I found that had the most flexibility yeah. um, in terms of like cost. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the enterprise plus option, um, which would cover us for whatever town wide services is a, is three about three grand annually. Okay. But they build out your first three tours. They give us support. We could have unlimited users, unli- unlimited organizations. Uh, right now, this is all done under a free a free version. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and which could still work. I mean, I could still yep. create. I could still transfer any of our existing walking tours over to this under the free version. Wow. That's awesome. Um, so we could, this could almost be a test case for all of Farmington. Right. We could we could do this, we could, well, let's just do the lovely street version, see how it works out, um, really play with it to the extent we can, and then um, know where the know where the problems are, or right. or maybe there aren't gonna be any problems. Okay. Right. Well I I think it's a fabulous idea. What do the rest of you think? Do you? I, I love it. Great idea. Great. Great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. Um, yeah. Actually, one of the things that I was going to mention when we got into our the meeting that we had last week, um, I was thinking and just emailed Steve about this the other day of putting together kind of a script to go along with the walking tour where you could mm-hmm. add additional information. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, you know, as I envisioned the walking tour, the, the guide could judge, you know, are they interested or not? But if we could put together a script to go with this mm-hmm. um, and people could bypass it or not on their phone, and we could certainly add some additional interesting information that we may have, you know, little yeah. stories about what was going on, whatever. Yeah, I, the I love becomes it. the audio. It, Correct. It could be the it could be the audio backdrop. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You might be able to stop and start it, depending on how long you're 
gazing at a particular house. Yeah, 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 very definitely. I like this. I think there's a there's a huge opportunity to be creative here in a way that we haven't had an opportunity before. And um, I think it's I think it's energizing. And I, I don't know about you guys, but every person I see has a phone in the hand. And this is how people communicate. This is where they get their information. So and, and in the lovely street in particular, the, the hill is challenging. The sidewalks are terrible. Uh, imagine someone in a wheelchair. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. this opens it up to so many more people. Right. It does. It really it, does. You can also view this on your computer, right? Correct. You yeah. don't have to be walking. Wow. So that's what I was showing you. Yeah. You, don't, you yeah. don't actually have to be there. You right. can you can do it virtually as well. Nice. Well, I am all for it. How about uh, now? We haven't heard from uh, who haven't we heard from? Anne. I don't actually see. Oh, looks good to me. Looks good to you. Okay, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, particularly you know, if we, if we get something that's available for the entire town, I mean, that that, that means that the museum might might be able to get it too. Yeah, that would yeah. be interesting. Absolutely, Ed. How do yeah, you feel think, about it? Uh, I was just going to add, yeah, I think it, I think it really uh, adds a lot of capabilities to enhance the walking tour with the sounds and the, um, yeah. like you said, opening it up to more people. Uh, I'm just curious, Matt, what's the what's the difference between the enterprise version and the free version here in terms of functionality or features? So free version doesn't come with any support. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, basically we build on our own. It's unlimited tours. And, and hang on, I'm going to share my screen with you guys so that you can see, because I emailed the developers just to get an idea. There we go. So free try, uh, enterprise, so free is free, no support. So mm -hmm. I could build stuff, but it, like I had to email them for other things. Um, Enterprise, you could do at four ninety nine annually, um, and includes unlimited tours, online support, unlimited downloads, basic permissions, single organization. So this is that gets a little tricky if we're going to use it town wide. Right. Um, enterprise is more along the lines of unlimited tours unlimited downloads, enhanced user permissions. So you could have multiple organizations with the ability to create their own tours. Um, you could test the tours before you release them. They'll build your first three tours. Mm. Single, or, again, this terminology of single organization is still a little nebulous with me as to what they mean by that. Like if we're doing this at the town level, they may consider any town sub-agency, a single organization. White labeled is their next level tier. And that is like a, um, a custom app, basically a branded app for Farmington. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know that we need to go to that level only because $3,500 for each platform, iOS and, and Android, I don't know that that's necessary. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the ability to have a smaller organization that um, doesn't have a lot of support and we could call on these guys to build those tours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could even start the first year with just their, their plus mm -hmm. at the, at the thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We've got options. Yeah, we do. Um, so let's see. So everybody agrees that it's a good idea and we should definitely go ahead with it. I think um, given our budget, which is pretty small, um, I think we'd need to know, Matt, whether the town would be interested in being part of this at the beginning. I don't, we can't afford $1,000. We um, can start with just the Lovely Street one. Okay. Uh, for free as well. Okay. There's nothing. There's nothing committing us to to moving forward with a larger version. It okay. was just the concept of, hey, 
this might allow us to to expand on what we've done and be and be a um not only an option for us but an option for other organizations yeah okay i see what you're saying good all right so use the free the free version as a test case really right yeah okay great i say go for it anybody disagree no go for it okay. wonderful matt bravo bravo so i might be calling on some of you for uh audio recordings if we're going to expand on our on our yeah, well, description yeah, of things absolutely yeah. some narration absolutely <laughs> i think all of us have uh, all sorts of different sound effects in our lives so <laughs> wonderful i think that's fabulous do everybody, you everybody pick a house everybody <laughs> pick a house there you go yeah matt um <clears throat> whatever you need moving forward we don't expect you to go and do this on your own and um, so call on us individually or as a group to help with this please yep. yeah so can we log in now to it and you can you can download the app and it's published ah, so it's great <laughs> okay all right do you so can you send us the link or i will send you guys the link great okay. yes great awesome great Super. Because I, I want to read and see everything that's there now. Yep. That's great. Um, awesome. And we had talked also, you know, Steve and I had talked last year about um, doing a virtual tour. And of course, this is a virtual tour. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, it can be hands-on or uh, it could be virtual from your home. So it, it allows for just everyone to see it, which I think is great. It's wonderful. Just wonderful. I think some some of the other things we might want to look at, it, like I I pulled the screenshots of the pictures you guys provided, but if we if we compile some of the older photos, I didn't delve into it, but you provided some old photos of some mm -hmm. of the homes. I included that in the app, so when they get to that particular house, they'll see more than one photo as well. Oh, so right. the same thing right. is true. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So you can do historic photos along with a contemporary one. Oh, that's right. terrific. Oh, there's some um, wonderful, a lot of opportunity to really make this a rich presentation for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terrific. All right. Well, not to be a, a contrary devil's advocate, but there are those Luddites out there. I know. <laughs> do not want an app. They do not want, they don't carry their phone. Um, there's a few. Right. Uh, we so have do we still <laughs> are we still gonna be able to hand out brochures? Are we still gonna right. have brochures? Or so don't we have a brochure of Lovely Street? Isn't no. there one in the we didn't do Lovely Street at all? We did well I think a couple of the first buildings got caught on in our um, our booklet in the, right. the one that we did under the grant but that was it it wasn't an actual walking tour per se okay this is a little more extensive so and okay. this is more along the lines of when we were doing the individual ones mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. that's why i took the first few properties and this is easily printable on the color copiers all right so. so so we can have a we can have a, a sheaf of those yeah for the luddites yeah yeah, bless the Luddites, yes. <laughs> no, really, I'm, I'm serious about that. <laughs> if you yeah, want to okay, carry great. around a lot of paper, I mean, we also just can put it together on Word and print it out for people. On a yeah, that's paper. right, Barbara. That's yeah. right. There are plenty of ways to have, get something on paper. And them, um, yeah, yeah. Good. Okay. Excellent. Well, thank you, Matt. That's fabulous. Um, Good. Well, moving on to the next agenda item. Um, well, we, everybody finished with this. Anybody want to make any other statements about this or have any other comments? I wanted to talk about the meeting that we had, an idea of what's going on at the museum. Yeah, that's. I think oh. that's our next agenda oh, item, exactly. uh, Bar okay. Barbara. So why don't you go ahead? Barbara's going to talk about our. So um, we met all, um, also with Ann Raymond from mm -hmm. a museum and she is extremely gung-ho. I mean, honestly, I, 
She's so excited about this. Um, she has already put together a large stack that I started going through of information that she has gotten um, through, you know, many pictures and things that I didn't delve into when I when I was doing it. Uh, she's also gone into the Library of Congress to get information. So um, we've had several different thoughts of how we'd like to have the the actual museum um, piece put together. Of course, they're going to be designing that, but um, we will probably have at least one of the stained glass windows hanging, um, which I can't wait to see. Um, they will divide the areas up. There will be an area for Tungsus Hose and we may be highlighting homes that have interesting people and um, have been involved with the factories and the life in Unionville that are not on the tour. We're not talking about every house. And remember I said there are just so many stories, but the museum may then be able to highlight the more interesting ones. And not only the original families, but um, she, she has begun to find interesting stories of people who have lived there afterwards that we're not even talking about, just to show um, how important Lovely Street and the people who have lived there are. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot going on, a lot of work. Um, the first date is June 11th, and they will probably start putting it up a week before. And that's when, if everyone wants to mark their calendars, um, they will probably want extra help with that, putting it together. So lots of, we're all, they're also going to um, try to put together, they have a lot of um, things, you know, uh, pieces of uh, material, things that were produced in Farmington. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like more hands-on, although they're not going to want everyone touching them. But you'll actually be able to see products. And um, we're also, we're thinking of um, perhaps talking to Sanford and Hawley um, again and always uh, if they have any old carpentry materials that perhaps, because to see what carpenters actually used back then, I don't know if they have samples of what the individual shingles and pieces of wood would have been because when we look at them now, when the houses have been redone, of course they've had to be, even though we'll get close to the design, it's manufactured. Um, when they were originally put up, every carpenter had their own tools, their own ways of doing things. The houses were actually much more individual in the design. The basic design may have been the same, but the individual work. So anyway, there's a lot of interesting things and um, a lot that they can do at the museum with us that I think will make it really very interesting for people. Great. So Steve and Barbara, you're pleased with the progress of uh, the project planning for the the exhibit and the event? You are? Point, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, one, sorry. Um, yes, Steve. One thing that Anne Raymond uh, and Anne Vibbert Wolfing uh, brought up was money. Um, and Lisa, you mentioned about a budget and having not a lot of money, but there are expenses as far as photocopies, enlarged uh, written documents on display boards. Um, they're not incredibly expensive, but when you have numbers of them, they might add up. Um, so we're going to have to get an estimate of what those costs might be. and what the uh, Historic District Commission could contribute, uh, what the town might be willing to contribute, and if the museum 
has any monies, you know, so we're gonna have to pool some resources okay. together to put this on. Um, and there's also opportunities for all of our members, committee members to uh, contribute as docents, as hosts at the museum to kind of explain what we're about. Because not only is, I, I believe we should take opportunity to present the new historic district, but also to, to explain to people who are visiting um, and maybe even potential homeowners that want are thinking about uh joining we hope a historic district <laughs> or the ones that are very leery but they're still going to come and see mm -hmm. especially people from this neighborhood and so that we might have members there as representatives or hosts to kind of explain and take the fear and loathing i mean the fear out of <laughs> or apprehension out of these the people loathing? who said so, i love it so it would be nice to have um, some of us, all of us, with name tags saying, you know, we're part of this committee. This is my name. If you have any questions about your house, this is what we're about. This is how we can help you. Yep. Yep. Um, of course, setting up. Um, uh, the museum isn't going to do any, I mean... They're expecting us to do a lot of the setup and the takedown. That's why I told everyone to write down the date. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're just kind of, you know, ringing the bell now. Um, so if you guys are going to be out of town, say, I'm sorry, I'm not available during this, you know, tell us as soon as possible. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, the exhibit opening, it'd be nice to have a good contingency number of us there. Yeah. the first first sunday um and um i guess that's about all i was gonna say yeah um but like barbara said this we're really once we're, we're getting into this and and ann raymond or her maiden name is mcmanama i don't know if you, any of you remember the name mcmanama mm -hmm. but she's a self-taught you know incredibly uh capable and enthusiastic researcher and it's just becoming, you know, not just the properties in these buildings, but the families who have occupied the building, the businesses, you know, that have helped establish the town. And we can go in many different directions. Right. She also was talking about perhaps having an area with maps. There are maps going back to when it was all farmland. Absolutely. And who owned that farmland? Yeah. Before it became just divided up into sections. Of that that's very exciting that's it, great yeah. Yeah. um so can i just ask a couple of questions um yeah. so you steve and barbara you're working with ann and ann <laughs> the two ants to uh right. to determine what is going to be included in the exhibit is that correct right doing, okay um all right great we're gonna have to call it down <laughs> always <laughs> no which no but that's good it's not like yeah, that, that actually, things. yeah yeah you know i would suggest um that you come to us at the next meeting uh with a list and say okay who and get names from us i mean i'm interested in volunteering but i'd like to make a commitment to specific things mm -hmm. so who is going to help us on this date to set up the exhibit who is going to help us at the event so Make up a list and, and get us to volunteer at the next meeting. Right, guys? Yeah. Let's let's do it. Let's do it right away. Um, it sounds terrific. You guys are making great progress. Um, anything else you need from us at this point? No, I don't think so. No? Okay. I don't think so. Well, great work. Anybody else have questions about the event or the exhibit? No? All right. Um, does anybody have anything else for the commission at this meeting you'd like to talk about or ask any questions of Garrett? All right. I guess that's it then. Can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting?
So move. I shall move. Thank you. A second. I'll second. Barbara, Barbara yeah. moved. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Barbara and Matt. All right. All in favor of adjournment, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any nays? No. Okay. Keep up the good work, everybody. We'll yeah, see you great, in. Great work, Matt. I mean. Yeah. Geez. Yeah. All of you. Fantastic. We'll see you in March.